Hey guys, today we're going to be working on angle pair relations. So definition of adjacent angles. Two angles that are adjacent if they share a common ray and a common end point. So if I have two angles here, angle A and angle B, this is going to be our common ray. And then this right here is the common end point. So taking a look at example one, for which diagrams below are angles one and two adjacent? So adjacent, adjacent means that they're next to each other, which means they have to be side by side. That's another way to think about the word adjacent. So if we take a look at example A, they have that common end point as well as this common ray that's right here, the ray that's right in between both the angles that makes it a common ray. So therefore, A is our answer. But let's take a look at B and C. So B, they're right across from one another, so they don't have a common, ang common ray. So for two, the two rays that would be for two would be this ray and this ray and neither one of those rays has anything to do with one so it can't be that one and then same thing with c if we take a look at two we have this ray and this ray and one is neither here um, is neither right here or right here so they don't have a common ray either but they both do have a common endpoint right in that center spot here all right Let's move forward to definition of vertical angles. Two angles are vertical if they are non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. Note their sides form opposite rays. So we have this picture and we'll have these two angles. These are vertical angles. They're right across from one another. They do not, they aren't adjacent angles, so they don't have any common rays between the two of them, so therefore they are vertical. All right, definition of linear pair, two adjacent angles form a linear pair if their non-common sides form a straight angle. So, if we have something like so, A and B, A and B are linear pairs. They form this straight line down here at the bottom. It's that straight line and then the two angles will make that straight line. All right, so example two, determine if the following pairs of angles are vertical angles, linear pairs, or neither. So example A, or example A, example 2A, we have this straight angle here. So since we have a straight angle, we wanna take a look at, maybe we have linear pairs. 1 and 2 are adjacent, so linear pairs also have to be adjacent, so they are adjacent. That checks off. So therefore, A is going to be a linear pair. All right, B, 1 and 2 are opposite from one another. They don't have any common rays, so it's a vertical angle. All right, and then C. C is really close to becoming a vertical angle, but because we have this ray right here, that one and two cannot be vertical angles. If it was this entire angle, then yeah, they would be vertical, but since that we're only looking at part of that angle, they are not vertical angles, so it is neither. All right, so next is our exploration number one. So if you want to take the time to go click on the link, type in the link, and try out um, the rays to in different positions and slide the shaded region into different positions and see what you get on vertical angles. So congruent angles. If two angles are congruent, then they have the same degree. 
So therefore, angle B is congruent to angle A. So if angle, if they are congruent, that would mean angle B equals eight, and then angle A would also equal eight. They both equal the same thing, so they're congruent. And this is a symbol for congruency. So the equal sign with a little squiggly on top. Vertical angle theorem, if two angles form vertical angles, then the two angles are congruent. So that means our vertical angles that we have here are equal. So angle A is congruent to angle B. All right, so let's try example three. So I'm gonna help us with A, then I want you guys to try B and C. So A, these are vertical angles, so they are equal to one another. So A equals 41. And that's it. So now I want you to try B and C. Take a second, label Y and label D, see what you get. Alrighty. So for B, Y is 122, and C, D is 90. So remember this symbol right here, the little square thing, is 90 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at example four. So I'm going to do example A and example C, and then I'm going to have you guys do B and D. So for, or for A, we have vertical angles, so I know that they are equal to one another. Even though that my 4x minus 3 is a whole statement and not just like A or B, they still equal. Even if we have to do a little bit of a solving, they still equal. So I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. So now I have 80 equals 4x, divide by 4, 20 equals x. And there you have it. They still equal even though we have to do a little extra work. Same with C. They both have statements on both sides. That still doesn't change the fact that they are equal to one another. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract B. And I have 3B minus 20 equals 17. I'll go ahead and add 20 to both sides. And then I have 3B equals 37. Then I'll go ahead and divide by 3 to get B equals 37 over 3. So they're going to be equal no matter what is on either side of your vertical angle. All right, so take a second, pause the video, and try B and D. All right, hopefully you got a chance to try these out. Here are the solutions. If you need any help, please make sure that you ask your teacher or re-watch. Um, you can pause and check out the solution. All right, exploration number two. If you want to take a second to try this one out, feel free to do so. You can pause the video and try them. All right, linear pair theorem. If two angles form a linear pair, then the angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So if this is our linear pair, that means angle A plus angle B equals 180 degrees. Add them together, they equal 180. All right, let's try a couple of these out. So 5A, we have one side is E, the other is 50. So 50 plus E equals 180. So all I have to do is subtract my 50. So now I have E equals 130. Another way to think about it, if we take a look at B, we have one part is 53, the other part is Y. I can do 180 minus 53. That's another way that I can set up this problem right here. So that we get y equals 127. So whichever way you, dec you decide to do it, you can set up your equation and subtract that way. Or if you see that, oh, I can just subtract my number and I'll get the other side, you can do that too. All right, C, remember this box thing is 90 degrees. That shows that it's a right angle. So 
90 degrees. So a nice thing to remember is that 180 minus 90 is 90. So if one half of it is 90 degrees, the other half will also be a 90 degrees angle. So W equals 90 degrees. All right, let's try a few examples with actually solving. So the same thing with the ones above, I'm gonna do A and C and you guys are gonna try B and D. So A, even though we have more than just a variable here, we're still gonna add them together and they're still gonna equal 180. That does not change at all. So now I have 4X plus 124 equals 180. Subtract my 124. 4x equals 56, and then divide by 4, x equals 14. So they still add up to equal 180, even if we have a whole term in there. A whole solution. Not solution, that's not what I'm looking for. Whole problem. Alright, same thing with C. Even though that it has an equation inside, more than one term, we're still going to add them together. And they're still going to equal 180. So now from here, we just have to combine our like terms. So I now have 5B minus 7 equals 180. Oh, sorry, not minus 7, minus 3. 5B minus 3 equals 180. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. So now I have 5B equals 183, divide by 5, B equals 35.4. I think I did that one. I think I wrote that one wrong. Hold on one second. 183 divided by 5, 36.6. Sorry, I wrote down the wrong one from a different problem that I was doing. So, B equals 36.6. Alright, take a second, try B and D on your own, pause the video, and then I'll show you the solutions. Alright, so there's B, and here is C. So take a look at those, pause the video, go through the solutions. Alright, and example 7. So for this one, we just want to go through and find the variables for each one. So this is a combination of linear pairs and um, vertical angles. So the first thing I usually look for is vertical angles because those are the easiest. They are going to be the exact same on both sides. So y equals 37 because they're vertical angles from here to here. All right, next we have this linear pair right here where we have this 37 and the x. Those are linear pairs. So for my x value, I'm going to subtract 37 from 180 to figure out what my x value is. So x equals 143 degrees. All right, and then so we do the same thing with b. The first thing I look for is that vertical angle. So 32, 132 and B are vertical angles. So that means B equals 132. I also notice that C and A are vertical angles, but I have to find one of them in order to find the other. So I can't just say, oh, well, C equals A. I actually have to find that number. So I'll go ahead and create a linear pair here. That creates a straight angle. So I'm gonna do 180 minus 132. I end up with 48. So C equals 48, as well as A equals 48. They're vertical angles, so they are congruent. So that's how you work with these problems when you have to find more than just either the linear pair or the vertical angles together. Okay, and then our last one, C. So. Like I said, I usually look for that vertical angle, so I know that 7x equals 2y. But I can't solve this, because 
one is x and one is y, so I can't combine them together. So now I'm going to take a look at the linear pair that it makes right here. So I now have 7x plus 9x plus 20 equals 180. So by doing that, I can now solve for x and then plug it back in to solve for y. So I'll go ahead and combine my like terms. 16x plus 20 equals 180 minus my 20. 16 equals 160, 16x, my bad. And so then when I divide out my 16, x equals 10. All right, and then I also want to find y. So I know that this is going to be in my equation. Move it over here. So now I have 7 times 10 equals 2y. 70 equals 2y. 35 equals y. So there we have it. We couldn't necessarily use the vertical angles first, so we had to go with the linear pair. But either way, we still end up finding both of our variables. Alright, if you have any further questions, please feel free to ask your teacher. Have a great day.